guys, Angus here. Got another airsoft gun review for you guys today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dan Wesson CO2 powered airsoft revolver. Now if you're interested in purchasing this product after you watch this review, there will be a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can buy this gun for about $120. Now let's jump right into the review and of course, as usual, start off with the gun's packaging. Now this is the box your gun will come in. As you can see, fairly flashy, bright green, pretty nice color, with a large picture of the revolver as well as it states Dan Wesson rather proudly, also indicating that this is the 6-inch model. This gun is also available with a 4-inch or 8-inch barrel and is also available in a silver or chrome variant as opposed to the black or gray model we have here. But despite all its flashiness, this is just a cardboard box with a styrofoam backing. When you take everything out of the box, this is what you should see. Inside the box, you get a small easy pour bottle of ASG BBs. These BBs appear to be highly polished. You can go ahead and use them. You'll get a rather small Allen key, a 20 millimeter tactical rail that you can actually mount on the revolver. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. A shell speed loader to make loading the shells into the cylinder a little bit easier. Six metal shells. This gun is only compatible with the Wind Gun or Dan Wesson metal shells. Talk a little bit more about those later as well. Get your Dan Wesson user's manual. This is a pretty simplistic manual. A couple pictures in here. Mainly just discusses the basics of, you know, loading up the shells into the cylinder, safety, cocking the hammer back, etc., etc. Little advertisement for ASG BBs in the back stating you should only use those in this gun, but really uh, any TSD.2 variant will work fine. And then, of course, you get your Dan Wesson CO2 powered revolver itself. Now, out of the box, this is a pretty cool gun. Revolvers are sweet airsaw pistols. Maybe they're not as good performing as some of the more modern airsaw pistols, but the revolvers are just plain sweet. They are a badass gun. If you're looking for something that just looks cool, be a great addition to the loadout, the revolver variants are really nice guns, especially this Dan Wesson one shown here. Now, out of the box, the gun does have a significant amount of heft to it, weighs in at maybe three pounds, and the reason for that is because it's basically all metal. There's only two plastic pieces on this gun, those being the orange tip at the front of the barrel. This is required if you're in the United States. And your pistol grip on the back where your CO2 is housed, it's a rubberized plastic component on there, uh, this being the more so flimsiest piece on the gun, but it's still fairly solid. Everything else on the pistol is metal, including your hammer, your safety, your cylinder, your whole body of the pistol, your trigger, your trigger guard, your six inch long barrel. It's all metal with the exception of those two pieces that I pointed out. So rather solid external construction. It appears to be painted rather well, has some nice trades on here that I'm going to zoom in uh, on for you guys in a little bit. And it's just phenomenally painted and built externally. Internally, the gun is powered off of standard 12 gram CO2 cartridges. Uh, a lot of people ask me where you can buy these. You can buy them at Walmart, Kmart, anywhere really around you. And if you can't find them anywhere around you, just buy them online. I know Airsoft Station does stock them in various different uh, amount packs. Now, put the CO2 in the gun. It is stored inside the grip, as I stated earlier. You have to slide the grip off, and no button to do that. It simply slides off like so, revealing where your CO2 will be stored. Uh, you might want to hold the gun upward for when you do this because this thing doesn't attach and it just flimses around the whole time and gets in your way as you try to insert the CO2. In order to insert the CO2, I recommend placing it front first and you need to have the screw at the bottom loosened all the way down. At that point, the CO2 will pop right in. Of course, I just tightened it to make things a little bit more difficult on myself. But the point is, the CO2 will slip in and you'll be able to tighten it in place via the screw at the bottom. I would recommend that you use the CO2 entirely before you remove it, because if you were to just simply remove it, you'd be blasting cold CO2 everywhere, and you'd end up with a frozen uh, cartridge you need to remove by hand. In case some of you are wondering, the gun gets about 120 shots off per CO2 cartridge, which is fairly efficient uh, for these revolvers. It's more than enough first couple shots actually off of this thing are clocking in around the 450, 500 feet per second area. So if you want a hard hitting sidearm, uh, CO2 guns tend to be and the Dan Wesson revolver is no exception. So cartridge, housing the grip, pretty practical. As I stated, this is a little flimsy, but what are you going to do? 
but when you're gripping the gun, it does feel fairly comfortable. A little bit of texture on there and it is rubberized to give you a little bit more comfort and a little better grip. Now, people often ask me the differences between the gas and the spring revolvers. The difference is that the gas revolvers are double action as opposed to the spring ones which are single action. What double action means is it means I don't have to cock the hammer back. I can simply continue to pull the trigger like so and be able to fire rounds. However, if you do the double action, which is a faster trigger pull, allows you to pull back a lot quicker than having to reset the hammer each time. It is a tougher and heavier trigger pull. Me personally, I prefer to cock the hammer back for either shot or any shot, whether it's double action or not. Cock it back like so, it's a much quicker and easier trigger pull. But when you're in a situation, you don't exactly have time to continue pulling the hammer back. The gun is double action, which is a nice advantage to have in the field. And the hammer cocks back fairly easy, and how this gun works is when the trigger is pulled, the hammer comes forward, striking a pin which ejects a small amount of CO2, pushing the BB out of the barrel. Now, as to where your shells are stored, they're stored inside the gun's cylinder. In order to pull out the cylinder, you have to mess with your safety switch, which also serves as your cylinder ejection. The safety is this small tab located on the side and when pulled all the way to the back position onto the S, the gun is on safe, the trigger can't be pulled and the hammer cannot be pulled back. If you were to push it forward slightly, the gun is on fire and the trigger can be pulled. And if you were to push it forward all the way and hold, the cylinder will simply push out. Now when you push the cylinder out, you will reveal six chambers for you to store each of the six shells that were included with this gun. As you can see, I've already installed four. Now, as I stated, the shells for this gun are propriety to the Wind Gun or Dan Wesson revolvers. They're a bit smaller than the ones you'd get with your propane or green gas, cheaper, maybe HFC or UHC revolvers. These are constructed of metal, have a rubber cap on them, and in order to insert the BB, you store one BB per shell, simply place it in the rubber end, push down so it locks in place, and then insert it into the cylinder like so. You can use, do this manually or use the included speed loader that came with the revolver. Now once you have your six shells loaded up, you simply snap the cylinder back in place by pushing it in like so. It gives a loud reassuring clack, letting you know it's been locked in place and it is now ready to fire the BBs from the shells. Since you have six shells that hold one BB each, you get six shots with this gun. That doesn't compare very much to the more modern airsoft pistols using magazines out there that can hold 25 rounds. But hey, you got six shots, you should be able to do it in one. Now, with that being said, I know some of you guys are probably still wondering about that tactical rail that was included with the gun. You can mount this on the revolver so you can put an optic on the gun. I've seen people put 55mm scopes up there. Uh, not exactly practical, but it looks pretty funny. If you wanted to install the rail, the first thing you have to do is remove your rear sight. There will be two screws located on the right side of the gun that you must unscrew. The rear sight will pop off. And then the next step is the more difficult one. There's two small pins located just above the cylinder. And what you actually have to do is you have to find something extremely small, maybe a safety pin or something, and push them out. Even the included Allen key uh, won't fit in there to push them out. You need to use something even smaller than the tiny Allen key to get those pins out. But once you do that, this piece will come off and you'll be able to slide and attach the tactical rail to the top of your revolver and then you can go about replacing the rear sight on there, putting those pins back in the holes, etc, etc. It's a pretty difficult process. I got it on there once but took it off and the only reason I figured out how to do it was because I watched someone else's review. Uh, no one really states how to put the rails on, not even the gun's manual, so hopefully you learned something from my review. Anyway, getting on with the review here, besides the tactical rail, we do have some iron sights up there that you can use in replace of an optic. The rear sight is adjustable. You can turn it to the right or left, as well as move it up a little bit via some flathead screws on the top and right side of the revolver. There are marks indicating which each of them do. The rear sight is just a standard sort of slit in the brick. I call it the pyramid sight lines up with your front sight on the front of the gun, which is not adjustable, simply a small crest painted nicely with a white dot that you line your rear sight up with, take aim and fire. So if you don't put the tactical rail on there, at least you get some iron sights. I found the iron sights to be pretty accurate when you sight the rear sight in, get it lined up perfectly with the trail of the BB and the front sight. It's a very accurate gun when you're aiming down your sights. And really, that's it for the features on the Dan Wesson CO2-powered revolvers. So let's go ahead and get to the final conclusion of this review. 
Now, as I stated earlier, revolvers are sweet guns in airsoft. You hardly ever see them anymore, but their awesomeness has never died. They're still cool guns, and the Dan Wesson is a good example, and it's also a good quality example. Not any of the cheaper ones that you're going to find for 50 bucks. This is a solid gun. It's definitely worth the, worth the price tag of $120. Built extremely solidly, made in a metal, only two plastic pieces on here, one of them being your orange tip, which is required, and your grip, which the grip, yes, it is plastic, but it's a comfortable, rubberized, textured plastic, gives you a nice, comfortable grip on the pistol. Gun holds six shots. That's going to be a con for some of you guys out there, but it's a revolver. They're going to hold six shots no matter what, so if you're looking at a revolver, you probably expect it to hold six rounds. Cylinder locks and clicks out rather easily, locks in pretty nicely. The shells the gun comes with are really nice, if you notice those trades on the back of them earlier. The gun is double, double action, which is a huge advantage when you buy a gas revolver as opposed to the spring ones. And also some of the other pistols out there where they have to rack the slide, you can simply have this out there and pull the trigger. Of course, cocking the hammer back makes a nice, easier trigger pull. The iron sights on the gun are very accurate, but you do get a nice tactical rail to put up here if you really wanted to go through the trouble of mounting it, just to have maybe a red dot or something up there, but more so being that it's a pistol, you'd want it to fit in a holster. I wouldn't recommend the rail unless you're just hanging this on your wall or using it as a primary, perhaps. And really, the gun is a solid piece, firing around 450, 500 feet per second on the first shot of the CO2 cartridge. We do have a chrono video on this channel if you want to see that for yourselves. And really, that's all I have to say about it. It is worth the price tag. I think it's a cool gun. It is limited, however, being that it's a revolver. And what I would truthfully recommend this as, as a really closer range pistol, maybe even a backup to your backup. Say someone's charging your position, you just pull this thing out, pull the trigger, and take them out real quick at maybe a range of maybe 60 feet or less for the most effective uh, accuracy out of this gun. But otherwise, it's a solid pistol, built, built very well, and definitely a nice piece for anyone looking to add a gun to their collection. Anyway guys, this has been Death Carrier Soft's review of the Dan Wesson CO2 Powered Revolver. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe.